Institute of Dentistry, SRM Dental College, Ramapuram. It gives me immense pleasure in welcoming you all for today's webinar, Innovations in Pediatric Dentist, uh, Endodontics. So we have with us today a very eminent speaker, Dr. Ganesh Jivanandam, to deliver this lecture. So before we begin uh, today's session, I would like to introduce the speaker of the day. Uh, Dr. Ganesh Jivanandan is currently the Assistant Dean of Innovation and Development at Savita Dental College, Chennai. He completed his undergraduation and went on to pursue his post-graduation in Pediatric Dentistry from Meenakshi Amal Dental College. He also went on to complete his PhD from the Savita University, Chennai. Dr. Ganesh holds a patent for inventing the world's first rotary file for primary teeth and has won many accolades for the same. He is also currently working on many researches and patents pertaining to various domains in pediatric dentistry. He has about 37 national and international publications to his credit. Dr. Ganesh has delivered numerous lectures at national and international conferences and has also chaired various scientific sessions. We are indeed very happy to have you with us sir, today and over to you, sir. And uh, one small announcement for all the delegates. Uh, uh, if you have any queries or questions during the session, you can feel free to put them down in the chat box. And I think sir will be very glad to answer all those questions at the end of the session. So if you have any queries during the session, you can please put them down in the chat box and all those questions will be dis discussed at the end of the session. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful introduction what you have given. It took me 10 years back of whatever I have done. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, let me introduce myself. This is Dr. Ganesh Jivanandir. I work at Savita Dental College and Hospitals. And I am the inventor of uh, a pediatric rotary system, which is called uh, Keto File Systems. So I heard uh, there is undergraduate, the interns, as well as the postgraduate students who are in this particular uh, webinar. So my webinar wanted, I personally wanted to be very short and simple. And I wanted you all to understand the basics of this pediatric endodontics and what advances are there in this pediatric endodontics. With that, my first thing which I wanted to tell you is what is pulpectum? So that is the basics. Any invention you do or any advancement you do, okay? I personally believe you should have the basic knowledge into full, full pledge level. So as a pediatric dentist, pulpectomy is the most commonest procedure what we usually do. And we call this pulpectomy procedure as a complete removal of necrotic or infected tissue and restoring it with the biocompatible material. To be very simple, you can see this picture on your right side and your left hand side side. There is one particular molar tooth where there is decay which is involved the uh, pulpal tissue. What we have done is we have done some certain procedures. We have removed the necrotic debris and then we have restored it with the uh, obturating material or a biocompatible material. So when we do this particular step, what all is involved in this particular procedure? You see this picture there. Uh, we have placed the crown and obturating material. We have done the pulpectomy. The, these are the steps which you will have to remember. And I usually give this as a key word as ACCOC. ACCOC. A stands for the access opening. When you get a uh, RCT or, a, or a, you are planning to do a pulpectomy procedure, first step what you do after your rubber dam application is you do an access opening. And then you check for canals. How many canals are there inside the canal, inside the uh, access open tooth. So you do canal location. Uh, cleaning and shaping, which I, what I mean by cleaning and shaping is the removal of the uh, debris material which is there inside the uh, uh, root, root complex. And you obturate it with the biocompatible material and then place a crown. Among all this step, ACCOC, one step which you will have to be very careful about is when you do a pulpectomy procedure. Of course, you will have to be very careful in doing all the procedure, but at extra caution, you will have to take in a procedure called cleaning and shaping. This plays one of the most important steps in your pulpectomy. And remember, I would want to add this particular statement. In primary teeth, it is not called cleaning and shaping. It is called chemo-mechanical preparation. I repeat. It is called chemo-mechanical preparation because more than your mechanical preparation, how do you remove the pulpal tissue or how do you remove the infected dentin which is there inside the root canal space, your irrigant, 
what i mean by chemo is your irrigant your saline sodium hypochlorite or chlorhexidine plays very important role for your success of pulpectomy uh, don't think like okay i have done an access opening i have done the canal location i have completely removed the uh, uh, pulpal tissue uh, i have obturated use sufficient amount of irrigant to debris all the debris which is inside the canal because your primary root complex is a complex material what i mean by complex material is there are small small pieces and bits of uh, pulpal tissue which is overhanging at the floor of the pulpal chamber at the lateral walls so it is always better to flush out as much as possible when you do the pulpectomy procedure so a uh, before uh say about 2019 99 1990s uh, or till 2015 or 15 we were actually using this particular hand files everybody would have seen this particular file which is called a k file system so we have a series of k files we have 15 20 25 30 35 uh, are the color coded system you have white yellow red blue green and black so these is uh, these hand files were actually used to do, do this chemo mechanical preparation so what we do is we after we locate the canal we we take a 15 size file we clean it with 15 size file and then followed by a 20 size file 25 size and 30 size file so when once we feel that the file that these hand files were tremendously used or uh, this is the only system which was available in 2000 till 2014 15 so what everybody were in this particular hand file system for doing a pulpectomy procedure when you go back on you check your literature there are n number of articles which says root canal preparation in primary teeth with hand files are more successful so you take one more articles you check you just take hand files in primary teeth any article will say uh when i compare a rotary file once they compare before they were comparing this rotary files the files which was used for the adult system so adult systems were taken compared with the hand files which is there available and everybody reported saying that there is no significant difference when you compare hand files and the rotary file system now i have been so the literature concludes saying that the when you do a pulpectomy procedure with hand file you you will get a good quality of obturation sir you have been telling that rotary file system is there you have invented one rotary file system and finally you say hand file system is is more than enough to do a pulpectomy procedure yes i accept that particular fact because eventually you are removing the pulpal tissue which is there inside the canal you can do it with hand files you can do it with rotary files you can do it whatever reciprocating file system which is available but the most important factor you will have to take into consideration is this particular factor your time how long are you taking and how best are you cleaning your canals that is the most important thing when it comes to your innovation see uh, i am an undergraduate student or a postgraduate student whenever you think something new in this particular field or you feel i wanted to invent something in this particular field invent a device or a material or anything which will reduce the time of the working capacity that is very very important next 10 years when you go whatever product you develop should have less time or should take less time to complete a procedure or you take a rotary hand piece or you take an instrument any instrument i have been till 2000 say example we are in 2021 till 2021 i have been doing pulpectomy for 20 minutes uh, but in 2021 there is an instrument which is launched which will make my pulpectomy procedure to complete in 10 minutes that is your great success that is innovation so when you reduce when it reduces the fatigue and time of one particular operated especially in the field of uh, endodontics or dentistry you will have a best material out and your material will be one of the best material which is used worldwide okay remember this particular point especially the final year students or your interns or the pg students who are having sufficient time to explore what exactly is there in dentistry have this particular thing in your mind so that you will have many ideas coming up so rotary instrumentation remember a rotary means a nickel titanium file so to understand this particular thing uh you will have to know about 
stainless steel file and a nickel titanium file. What do I mean by stainless steel file? The files are made up of stainless steel and the files are made up of nickel titanium. So what is the basic difference between this stainless steel file and nickel titanium file? When I bend the file, I repeat, when I bend the file, the file stays in the same position, it is made up of stainless steel, okay? When the file comes back to the normal position, for example, from straight, I am bending it to 90 degree, automatically it comes back to the straight position, which means the file is made up of nickel titanium. That's all. Or the stainless steel files are not flexible, nickel titanium files are flexible. Done. So what is the advantage of this particular files, nickel titanium files over stainless steel file? Yes, you can prepare the root canal in a faster way. And your, I, I already told you, you will have a significant reduction in time of tear side procedures, what you do. That is the first thing which is very helpful for, uh, for a pediatric dentist because we do multiple pulpectomy at single visit. For example, we go for general anesthesia case, we have 10 pulpectomies to be done. Remember, you take a hand file, I will have to use for 15, 20, 25 till 35. Whereas if I have only one rotary file, put it in one canal for just 25 seconds, my entire pulpectomy procedure is done. So advantage is always the rotary instrumentation. Of course, it is faster and it is reducing the charge side time. Next, remember, you will have to also consider the professional fatigue, what you will get and patient fatigue. See, uh, I have a kid who is corporate, uncooperative and I can finish the pulpectomy procedure in 10 minutes. Whereas if I use it, the stainless steel file, I'll take another 15 minutes more. Remember always using a rotary instrumentation is better because I can, I have to deal the child for just 10 minutes. So that is one advantage when you use it with rotary file system. So next will be, remember we have a curved canal in primary teeth. So since the files are flexible, it takes the original path of the canal and it comes back. So it is very easy. Fracture raise is very less. Uniform debridement because I'll, I'll, I'll give you one small uh, scenario. I'm doing a pulpectomy in 8.5. I have done all access opening in XYZ. I am locating the canal in mesiobuccal. Now I am using a 15 size file. Are you prepared? I'm preparing the canal. Whether I am preparing the mesial surface of the canal, distal surface of the canal, or the buccal, buccal or the lingual surface is, is questionable. I can prepare any surface. But when it comes to rotary file, it has a uniform debridement. It will touch all the, all the walls simultaneously and it will definitely clean better. Next point is irrigation. As I've already told you in primary teeth, we are more, much worried about the chemicals, what we use in uh, irrigant. So for the chemical or the irrigant, which, to, uh, which is required to reach till the apex, we need a significant enlargement in the canal space. For the significant enlargement, I need a good rotary files to prepare this particular canal so that my irrigant flows completely. So when I prepare uniformly and I have used irrigant properly, obviously my obturation is better. I will not have any overfills or underfills. So these are the things which is advantage of using a rotary file system in primary teeth. So you go back to literature and you put rotary file systems which are available till date more than 150 rotary file systems are available for adult dentistry. I repeat adult files which I mean by the files are exclusively designed for adult. So all these file systems are the advantages to over a period of time profile for is introduced later they developed it pro taper came and then k3 came now you have pro taper next you have pro taper gold so many systems are available so all systems are pertaining to the uh, adult, adult or teeth so people who are interested in pediatric endodontic uh, and rotary endodontics in 2016 they were actually using this adult rotary file to prepare the primary teeth so what happens when you use adult rotary file in primary teeth? I will let you know. So before going into this rotary files, these terminologies you will have to understand. A constant taper file. What do I mean by constant taper file is my tip of the file till D16 or till the end, I have a uniform taper. I can have a O2 taper like your K files, right? Your K files are two percentage taper. What do I mean by two percentage taper is every mm of my file is 0.02 every mm of my file increases by 0.02. For example, D0 is 0.02, my D1 is 0.04. 
every every mm increases by 0.22 i have a progressive taper pipe what do i mean by progressive taper is pertaining to separate mm for example from d1 to d3 i have 6 percentage taper from d4 to d12 i have 8 percentage taper or 9 percentage taper but then i have different taper for the rest of the working length which means every segment of the file has different different taper range that is your progressive taper range now you will have to understand the terminology called v v taper variably variable taper what do i mean by variably variable taper is every mm of the file has a different taper for example d1 has 4 percentage taper d2 has 6 percentage taper t3 can have 8 percentage taper or 6 percentage taper which means every mm of the rotary file has a different taper you will have to understand this particular terminology called variably variable taper because this is the point or this is the technology which is used in pediatric rotary files and we got a patent for this particular point alone means that this is the concept which is entirely different from the other field which is available in the world so we we taper is the taper which is available in the pediatric rotary kiddo files and next so go back to literature every time when you read read a literature which is there in the past also so that you can understand what exactly is happening in the current scenario this is one of the most important article everybody who is interested in pediatric anatomics will go through use of nickel titanium rotary files for primary teeth this was the first article in 2001 one particular author called barretal elizabeth barretal used adult rotary file to do a pulpectomy procedure in primary teeth from 2000 to 2016 there was no file system which was designed for primary teeth so everybody till 16 for 2000 to 2016 that 16 years were using this adult file to do a pulpectomy procedure so what are the problems i have already told you what are the problems you can ask me sir you you told me there are more than 150 rotary files which is there for the permanent teeth and i take one system and do it, do pulpectomy procedure in primary tooth why do i i have to waste my time in designing a rot rotary file for primary teeth to get a patent for that particular design marketing x y z so this particular point points you will have to remember the problems which has there which are available or which what are uh, we felt when using this rotary adult rotary file system is remember your primary teeth as a conical shape so the files which were designed for your permanent teeth are designed to prepare this conical shape and not the ribbon shape your your primary teeth are actually having a ribbon shaped morphology so whereas the file which are designed for adult is done for the conical shape so preparation will be less number 1 number 2 excessive removal of radicular dentin there is a root portion right when you use this adult uh, files there are having a greater taper which for example 6 percentage 8 percentage taper or a 4 percentage taper at different mm what happens is when this rotary files prepare the root surface of the primary teeth they, they remove the excess dentin what happens when the excess dentin is removed in uh, in one particular uh, tooth the rate of resorption of that particular tooth increases by 50 percentage whereas for example i do a pulpectomy for a 6 year old kid using an adult rotary file and i wanted to preserve that particular tooth till 8 years but you because of this excess removal of dentin my tooth exfoliates within one year so the two years i am not able to maintain that particular primary teeth in arch but, but, but my ultimate aim is to preserve the primary teeth but i am failing when i use a greater taper file next thing is something called a strip perforation when you prepare the uh, primary teeth especially these uh, strip perforation you are the pgs who are doing pulpectomy procedures more pulpectomy procedures you you would have uh, witnessed i you would have done an axis opening you have done the bmp xyz when you obturate you feel the obturating material is covered the uh, uh, cover the lateral walls of the uh, root or it is covered or it is covering the underlying permanent tooth bud it is not gone epically but your obturating material is gone over the tooth bud that is because of something called a lateral strip perforation which means you have prepared the inner surface of the 
root more than the outer surface what what i mean by inner surface is the surface which is there close to the uh, close to the forcation you have concentrated more on the forcation area preparation rather than the lateral or when you are using rotary files you have not swiped the rotary files towards the lateral wall or the outside wall you have prepared the rot or you have uh, swiped the rotary files towards the forcation area when you do that that x the, the curvature which is available for the primary teeth right in that particular level it will chuck remove the radicular dentin when you oxidate the oxidating material will flow to the uh, underlying permanent tooth bed so whenever you prepare the uh, root space make sure you are preparing the outer wall uh, perfectly than the inner wall so this is one particular clinical tip which i wanted to give when you do a pulpectomy procedure so these are the underlying problem which is available for the uh, rotary files which is designed for the permanent teeth so what are the ideal requirements for a rotary file in primary teeth uh, i i have wanted to introduce a uh, something terminology called shank i'll tell you what exactly it is so my first point is i wanted a rotary file which is there for 14 to 16 mm that is more than enough anywhere between 14 to 16 mm my primary root is also very small so if i have a convenient file with 14 to 16 mm i can approach the distal surface of the upper molar or the distal surface of the lower molar because my child mouth opening capacity is very less so i prefer to have a rotary file which is short but what is the problem with the existing rotary file my existing rotary file is available at 21 mm that is the 21 mm file which is available for the adult teeth but i want a rotary file which is for which is available for 14 to 16 mm that is one next thing is the shorter shank shank in region uh, what i mean by shank is the the file where the flutes are there right from the the flutes which is not there to till the handle region that is what i call it is a shank region when i have a small shank so what happens is my file can enter into the hand piece easily at this at the same time i will not have a significant bulk of the length of the rotary file so my entire file should be around what i mean by is when i put the latchet inside the the handle inside the latchet i can have only 11 mm of the rotary files which is available so that is one particular thing which i can i i can i wanted in the rotary file next is the flutes what do i mean by flute is the cutting edge if you take a rotary file or the hand files you see there is a spiral thing that is the flutes so i should have anything between 12 to 13 mm that is more than enough so that it will prepare the root surface properly and remember my fourth point my minimum preparation should be or my minimum apical tip diameter should be 0.25 why do i say this 0.25 is uh, the postgraduate students kindly listen to this particular point because this has a very significant uh, role when you when you do a pulpectomy procedure we have done a uh, uh, study and we have proved saying that when you prepare the apical diameter when you prepare the apic apex of the uh, primary tooth using any any hand files or rotary files if you prepare only with till 15 size or only till 20 size your irrigant does not flow completely inside the canal i repeat when you prepare your apical uh, apical constriction or the apex of the tooth till only 15 size or 20 size your irrigant will not flow you will have to prepare minimum of till 0.25 tip at the apical region for your irrigant to completely flow inside the canal this is one important point okay you cannot say i have done a preparation till 20 definitely we will say that it is not significant or it is not sufficient and you have oxidated because you definitely your irrigant will not would have not reached uh, the apex completely and there may ultimately it will end into uh, into into failure so always prepare your canal till 0.25 minimum okay extirpation of pulp com uh, completely that is one point which i wanted i when i use a rotary file inside and i place it inside i want the pulpal tissue to be sucked out and removed so i want a rotary file files like that preferably a single file system imagine if i have one uh, one file to put it in one canal what will happen i have only uh, three canals all canals 5 5 seconds 15 seconds i can finish my entire pulpectomy procedure of course avoid excessive cutting of the primary tooth x Yeah, definitely that is one particular point which i have to take into consideration yes and finally everybody will also look into the cost effective and availability of this particular files 
so these are the ideal requirements which i had in my mind before designing a rotary file for primary teeth and eventually in 2016 we designed the first or the world's first rotary file for primary teeth which we call it as kido s this kido s stands for the k stands for kids e d o stands for endo s stands for shaper kids endodontic shaper that is the full form of kido s so in 2016 of course we got patent in 2014 itself but we took 2 years to manufacture this particular file and we launched the first generation kido s file in 2016 after one year we improved the kido s generation and the second generation was launched in kido kido s g was launched in 2017 then after one year we improved the kido s g and we launched something called kido s g blue in the in 2018 which is the third generation and in 2019 we we launched one more generation we call it as kido s square so currently we have four generations of kido uh, files which is kido s kido sg kido sg blue and kido s square i'll let you know what exactly is that in this particular files and the number first will be your kido s yeah you see three files on the on your picture one file with red band one file with blue band and one file with the black band so this particular red corresponds to a tip diameter of 0.25 which i have mentioned here this blue band is corresponding to 0.30 and and this particular black band corresponds to 0.40 what do i mean by 0.20 is when you see the tip of this particular file it has a tip diameter of 0.25 and when you see the tip of this particular blue, blue file it has something called 0.30 and this particular file file has a 0.40 so this particular red file is named as d1 d d stands or especially in your primary dentition d stands for the first primary molar lower say it is whether lower or upper it stands for the first primary molar e1 actually it is for the second primary molar and u1 is for universal anterior teeth say it is anterior upper or lower anteriors any to, uh, teeth uh, you can use this particular file so you see the total length of this particular file is 16 mm uh, that is the total length of the file and the 12 mm is the flutes or the cutting edge is there right that is 12 mm so uh, remember this particular uh, file is silver in color every can everybody can appreciate this particular file it is silver in color because it is a plain nickel titanium file what do i mean by plain nickel titanium file is this file is not undergone any heat treatment i have taken a nickel titanium uh, wire i have um, just grinded it and made into a rotary file so it looks as silver color and you see we have mentioned something called variably variable tapered file which means every mm of the file has a variably variable taper that is one so how what is the taper you see below d1 has 4 to 8 percentage taper which means 1 mm has 4 to 4 percentage second mm has 6 percentage third mm can have 8 percentage so d1 has 4 to 8 percentage taper e1 has 4 to 8 percentage taper but u1 has 6 to 8 percentage taper because i will have to use this in the uh, anterior tooth so i repeat 4 to 8 percentage taper in d1 and e1 whereas u1 has a 6 to 8 percentage taper first thing which you will have to understand or the things which you will have to understand from this kido file system yes there are three files d1 e1 and u1 there is red color file blue color file and black color file and it has a tip diameter of 0.25 0.30 on 0.40 16 mm file 12 mm uh, flutes and it has a variable variable taper this is the first generation file whereas when you take the second generation file first appreciate the color of the file it is dark golden color which means this particular file is undergone into a heat treatment i have done a heat treatment in this particular file so what happens is when i do a heat treatment my breakage of the file is less rest all is same your uh, total length is 16 mm your flutes is 12 mm it has red coded blue coded black black coded you have 4 to 8 percentage taper in d1 4 to 8 percentage taper in e1 6 to 8 percentage taper in u1 rest all is the same only the material is different that is your second generation file which is kido sg next will be your kido sg blue 
look at the fine yeah it is blue in color rest all is the same i have done a coating called titanium oxide coating so that's the reason why this particular file is blue in color okay you can appreciate this particular file rest all is the same 16 mm 12 mm fluids x y z all are same to keto s and keto st but only thing is the nickel titanium coating now what is the advantage of these particular files first file plain nickel titanium file second file heat treated nickel titanium third file heat treated plus titanium oxide coated do there is a difference in this particular generation yes there is a difference now your first generation keto s files you can use it for four molars four or four incisors whereas your second generation keto S sg files can be used for eight molars or eight incisors your keto st blue can be used for 12 molars or 12 incisor without fracture when you use the protocol properly and you when you use this particular files definitely your keto st blue sg or s will come to these many two so use correct protocol so that it will be easy for the longevity of the rotary files imagine i use one file for 12 molars i hardly spend around 80 to 90 rupees for one particular file so that is the advantage of having the generations of the rotary file now i told you there are three generations now the fourth generation is entirely different from the first three generation the reason is there are only two files in this particular generation so for example when you see this uh, second uh, first second and third generation this red color files are used for the narrow canals for example your mesial buccal or mesolingual canals of the uh, lower molar or upper molars and the blue files are used for the wider canals say example your distal canals and molars and for your uh, anteriors you use this particular black file i repeat the red color file are used for the narrower canals namely your mesobuccal and mesolingual canals your blue files are used for the wider canals which is the distal canals whereas your black file is used for your anteriors when you come to the fourth generation there are only two files one file for molar one file for anterior now how did we do this look at this particular file when you see the handle there is red color as well as blue color and one more file has green color and a black color which means i have combined the red color file and blue color file and made it as one file when you see this particular file when you see from the tip region till 5 mm you will have different cross section when you come along this particular file it has a different cross section i'll tell you what is the cross section remember this file is blue in color and it has a tip diameter of 0.28 uh, that is your p1 file your p1 file is this particular blue file and your black coded or the black ring file is the a1 file p1 stands for posterior one file a1 stands for anterior one file your posterior file has 16 mm length like your um, kido s and 12 mm fluids whereas the tip is 0.28 remember the tip is 0.28 whereas your anterior file which is a1 has a tip region of 0.38 and you have 13 mm fluids and 17 mm one mm we have increased for the anterior so sir you have not followed this particular iso standardization you will have to follow any files which are manufactured should follow iso standardization which means it should be either 0.25 or 0.30 or it should be 0.30 or 0.35 how can you use this 0.28 mm remember this iso standardization is used corresponding to your gp when i design a rotary file for 0.25 tip i can use the corresponding gp and obturate it with 0.25 whereas in primary teeth we are not worried about the gutta percha at all i can have any tip diameter depending upon my convenience or it prepares the primary teeth properly so i have an obturating material which is flowable so when i prepare till 0.28 or when i prepare to 0.38 it will obviously flow but minimum i should have 0.25 as a tip diameter so with this particular diameter we develop the fourth generation which is kido sg uh, s square which is kido s square so when you see the cross section of this particular file you look this particular 0 to 5 mm has a triangular cross section one file will have dual cross section which means the apical region has a triangular cross section whereas your coronal region has a teardrop cross section 
So epically, when you have a triangle thing, there are three point contact. So the epically, it will prepare with three point contact. Coronally, we'll have a two point contact so that I can achieve a good ideal preparation like Kido S, SG and SG blue. So that is the idea of this particular files. So uh, when you take the, when you will have to remember is it has 0.28 tip diameter and it has a dual cross section. And all the files or the, the uh, fourth generation files is also made up of nickel titanium uh, with uh, heat treated and titanium oxide coated. So these are the points which you will have to remember. So how many canals can I use this particular uh, rotary file, which you will have to remember is, again, this Kido S square files can be used for 12 molars or 12 incisors. So now I'll tell you the sequence of how I use this particular rotary files. Now you see the different cases, which is done by Kido S SG blue. Now you take this particular picture, which is done in your left hand side with Kido SG blue. So we have done an axis opening. I have located the canal with 10 size file and I've taken a working length with 15 size file. Say example, I am preparing the mesiobuccal canal of this particular molar tooth. I use 15 size file and do a complete preparation. Only 15 size K file and then followed by red color file in the mesiobuccal canal and mesiolingual canal and a blue color, blue coated, which is 0 0.30 tip diameter on the distal canal. And I prepare this particular uh, molar and I have oxidated with the metapix. You can see all the files, which are all the uh, radiographs, which are prepared with keto files only. You see the upper uh, right hand side, that is one palatal canal, which is oxidated, which is long enough, right? That for that particular tooth, I used an anterior file because it looks like an anterior teeth. So I used the black color file and prepared the primary molar palatal board. It is up to your convenience only. If you're, I'll tell you how to choose your rotary file. Uh, you put a 15 size file in the mesiobuccal canal. I repeat, you put a 15 size file in the mesiobuccal canal and you feel that the 15 size file has a snug fit, which means the canal is narrower. I, I, I have wanted to do a pulpectomy in 7.5. I have done an axis opening uh, on canal location. I am inserting a 15 size file in the mesiobuccal canal. In, when I insert the 15 size file, my 15 size file has a snug foot inside the mesiobuccal canal. It means that my, my canal is a narrower canal. So what I will do is I'll use 15 size file, prepare, followed by the red color file and finish it off. When I insert the 15 size file and I feel the 15 size file is loose, or it, it is wobbling inside the canal, which means the canal is wider. So what I can use is I can use the red color file and followed by blue color file and prepare, complete the preparation. That is in your mesial buckle. When it comes to your distal buckle and I insert a 15, uh, uh, when I come to your uh, distal canal, when I place a 15 size file, my file is wobbling or it is loose inside the canal. I will directly use the blue color, which is blue color file and complete it. That's how you will use it in molar. But when it comes to your anterior, remember, uh, especially for the postgraduate students, when you do an anterior teeth, kindly do not take working length or do not use 15 size file as the first file for anteriors, which means that you've not read any textbook. Your 15 size file is not the first file to be used in anterior teeth. It is always your 25 size file is the first file to be used in your anterior teeth. Remember this particular point. When you take working length or you're negotiating the canal, your 25 size file is the first file to be used in your anterior teeth. You read any textbook, textbook of Cohen, textbook of Engel, it will advise your 25 size as the first hand file to be used for your anterior teeth. And then you will prepare it with the black color rotary file and complete. To do all this preparation, Eventually, to complete your pulpectomy, it will take just 20 minutes when you use a rotary file and complete. So these are the things which we, we actually follow. I'll tell you my sequence of uh, using doing pulpectomy procedure. For example, say I got a patient and I wanted to do a pulpectomy in 7.5 and place a crown. I give an LA. That is my first procedure. And before the LA starts working, I will use a straight fissure burr and remove the crown portion, which means I will flatten the crown. Anyhow, I'm going to place a crown, right? So I will flatten the crown and then place the rubber dam, right? Once I place the rubber dam, I do an axis opening 
I will locate the canals with the 15 size file, prepare it with the 15 size file and use this rotary file and prepare. It. And then do a proximal slice and place the canal. That is one way of doing, that is first technique. Second technique is you do the give LA, you prepare the occlusal surface as well as the proximal surface, select your crown and keep. And then do access opening, do BMP, uh, uh, cleaning and shaping and obturate with material and then seal it and then give a crown. This is second technique. Both the techniques you can try it out. Please do not uh, give LA, uh, that is your own technique, but eventually, usually what do we do is give LA, wait, then you give uh, rubber dam, do a pulpectomy, wait, and then remove the pulp uh, pulpectomy, meaning rubber dam, and then do crown preparation, and then slice it, and then give a crown. The patient is already exhausted. So whenever the patient is, con see, when you start the procedure, when you can complete the crown portion first, it will be very easy for you to complete the pulpectomy procedure and simultaneously place the crown. So I would advise this particular sequence to be also uh, followed if you are really interested in doing it. So these are the rotary files or the innovations which are currently available in the uh, pediatric endodontics. Uh, I hope there is some knowledge which is given or shared for, by me. So when you have, uh, I would like to thank the organizing team of SRM Dental College for giving this uh, opportunity to present about uh, the Kiro file systems. So I am actually expecting any questions or you wanted me to elaborate in some more details about the uh, rotary file systems or hand file systems. You're most welcome. I can definitely clear your doubts. Any questions, please post, or you can even ask the question, I can definitely answer. The delegates who would like to ask any questions, please post them in the chat box. I think we can wait for a couple of minutes, sir. Uh, we'll see if anybody's coming, but coming up with any questions, sir. Somebody is asked to use the slideshow and present. That is what we tried, and uh, it was zooming out. That's the reason why we have actually. Uh, cut down this slideshow and we have presented in this particular thing. Is there any need to use H files after the use of Kido files? Actually, uh, you don't have to use any H file. Uh, that is one concept which I've been uh, also hearing for a long period of time because any file system or any rotary system which cannot remove the complete will have a capacity of removing the pulpal tissue completely. So it is actually not required to use the H file uh, after you use the keto file system, especially when, when it comes to your uh, fourth generation keto square, right? It actually has a cross section of H file. Uh, so you don't need an H file because the rotary file itself has a cross section of H file so that it will definitely remove the pulpal tissue. When you use rotary file and see and you swipe along the lateral wall, it will completely remove the pulpal tissue in a chunk. That is the advantage of this particular rotary file. So you don't have to use this H file when you use a rotary file system. Next question is one file can be used for pell molars or pell canals? That's a very interesting question. It's a pell molars, which means 36 canals. It is designed, designed in such a way that it comes for 36 molar, uh, 36 canals, which is 12 molars. Uh, sir, is there any difference in rotary torque and other settings? Usually, when it comes to primary dentition, we have a standard torque and uh, RPM. We have something called 300 RPM, which is set and 2.2 to 2.4 as a torque. That is more than enough to be used in the rotary size files, for which is designed for primary teeth. But when it comes to permanent teeth, each file has a different torque, okay? So that is one thing which you will have to remember. Uh, your choice of irrigant set. Uh, I start with selling. That is my first uh, irrigant what, what I use. Then I when I do BMP itself, I apply three to four drop of sodium hypochlorate inside the canal and then prepare with the rotary file. And I remember it is just drops, do not flush the sodium hypochlorate inside the canal, just three to four drops inside the canal and prepare. And finally, always have a chlorexin. If you can do it, definitely chlorexin. After you use saline followed by sodium hypochlorate and then saline and remove the sodium hypochlorate and then use chlorexidine 
a little bit of chlorhexidine and then saline. Remember, last solution should always be saline. That is one. What is the purpose of titanium oxide coating given on PDRC blue? Yes. Titanium oxide increases your flexibility by 75 percentage. And it, it comes into something called a control memory, which means when you bend the file, it will stay in its original position. It will not come back to the original, same position. That is some, something called a control memory. To be very open, the titanium oxide coated files doesn't fracture that easy. It, it, especially in primary teeth, it, it, it doesn't fracture at all. When you use it for in current sequence, I have not come across, I have definitely come across a file fracturing in Keto S. Keto SG also, I have not come across, but Keto SG Blue, I have not heard about the files fracturing inside the canal, especially when it is uh, used in proper uh, manufacturer's recommendation. That is one advantage of titanium oxide coated. Sir, was electropolishing used to make an oxide blue layer? No, it is just a dip layer. When you that the wire which is made itself, it, it has that particular dipping coating consistency. So it's just dipped. It, heat treatment is done and it is dipped. Electro polishing, uh, you ask this electro polishing, especially in your race file, right? When you have your fluids, in the fluid region alone, they'll do electro polishing so that your file cuts better. This is just a dipping. So it doesn't, you don't do an electro polishing in this particular keto files. That's an interesting question. Electro polishing is the first thing which I am actually hearing the questions. Yeah. Can these files be autoclave? Uh, will it have any effects on fracture resistance? Yeah, that's very good question. You can autoclave. I have recommended this uh, files till 12 molars after autoclaving only. You can definitely autoclave this file, nothing will happen. And remember, uh, it is always better to autoclave the files. Sir, I have a small announcement for the delegates. Uh, I have posted a link in the chat box. Uh, please use the link to provide feedback for the session. At the end of the feedback form, the certificate for the webinar will be automatically generated. The link is there uh, in the chat box now. I think we have another question, sir. Yeah, I see a very interesting presentation. Thank you. It is interesting for me also. I am happy to share and share that I used around two sets of Kido SC files. I am currently using the fourth set of your keto SG blue file it has become a routine of, of using rotary files for almost uh, all palpitations. I would like to know about this new generation where two cross sections of files combine in one. Will it cause any fracture? Again, the fracture resistance is always test. See, whenever I release a rotary file for primary teeth, my area is actually primary teeth, I always use this fracture resistant and test and then only bring into market. But what I personally feel is people who are using Keto SG moved to Keto SG Blue and then to Keto S Square, but they didn't like Keto S Square, to be very frank. They, everybody wanted to be with Keto SG Blue, very happy about Keto SG Blue files. But people who started with Keto S Square never wanted to go back to Keto SG Blue. So it is your own preference what rotary file system is suiting you because i have sales with keto s keto sg keto sg blue and keto s square all the file systems are moving on the same same rate only especially keto sg blue moves on a faster rate keto s there are people who are still using keto keto sg they say that i am very happy with keto sg sir that is the best file but according to me if you ask me I have used Keto SG Blue and Keto S Square. Both has equal preference, but my time is much less with Keto S Square, that particular generation. But if you feel that I am happy with Keto SG Blue, stay in Keto SG Blue. Or you try Keto S Square and you feel that, uh, no, I am not able to follow this I, or I don't get because I'll tell you the reason behind of Keto S, S Square generation. Uh, practitioners think that just removal of pulpal tissue is more than enough and I want just thin layer of obturating material inside my uh, my, my prime pulpectomy tooth. For them, keto S square suits more. There are some people, especially when you do post-graduation, what you think is you remove the entire pulpal tissue, you want the obturating material to be thick inside the canal. That's when you feel very happy about your pulpectomy or obturation. It's not like that. It's not about removing your tooth material. It is how less you remove or how much of pulpal tissue which you remove. When you talk into that particular concept, how much less amount of dentin is removed, is the pulpectomy or your, uh, your pulp tissue is completely removed, 
Keto S Square will be one of the best uh, file system which is available. So, but you wanted a thick obturation, that's when you feel happy. Keto SG Blue generations are the best. Uh, fracture, don't worry about the fracture. It doesn't fracture till 12, unless and until you use it for the uh, uh, under proper uh, scenario and consideration. Uh, as a postgraduate students, I am very sure you're using it more than 12 cases because I teach in an university. They tell me my PG students, I know they'll have to buy it from my dealer only. They buy only after 25 cases, which I definitely know. So I don't want to go into that particular asset. But as the manufacturer, I can definitely tell you it is recommended for 12. Okay, that's next question is ideal percentage of sodium hypochlorite to be used. Yeah. See, in Indian market, 3% sodium hypochlorite is the only thing which is available to be very open. But when you go back, you take AAPD guidelines or you read, uh, theoretically speaking, one percentage sodium hypochlorate is more than enough or the ideal irrigant which is to be used for the uh, primate. But three percentage sodium hypochlorate has a good effect and it doesn't have any harmful effect like that. So whatever is available, three percentage, we can use it. That, that, that doesn't mean or make any changes in that. Okay, effect of chemical sterilization on the file characters, what would be the ideal disinfectant? Say, Cosolex is one particular solution or a glutadiol solution which you will have to use for any file system. See, it, the, you don't think like this titanium oxide coated, when you put it in any solution, it will go off. No, it is a permanent coating, it will be there till files is there. So, any solution which you are using for stainless steel crown, you can use it for here, here also, provided you use it in the optimal recommendation which you have given for the manufacturer. So, Carcelex is one particular solution which you can put inside and do it, or you can use your 2% percent blue trial here. But I personally uh, prefer using it in autoclavable thing will be the most ideal thing which you can do. Any more questions? Sir, I think uh, that's all with the questions, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, that was a very wonderful lecture, sir. Uh, I would now request uh, Dr. Sendhil, sir, Reader, uh, Department of Pediatric Dentistry, SRM Dental College, to deliver the oath of thanks. Hi, good evening, one and all. So it was a very wonderful session, sir. I think we all are got enlightened with the <laughs> keto files. And now we can we are more confident and so that we can uh, finish our cases in on time and a little bit earlier, I think so, sir. Yes. It's a very useful session. And, and I'll also like to for I like to thank our management and our dean, sir, and the VP, sir, for giving us this opportunity. And the HOD ma'am and my friends and my fellow colleagues. Dr. Shankar, Profi, uh, Suganya, Nancy, and uh, our PGs, and our uh, undergraduate students, as well as uh, interns for the support. And, uh, and also thank our speaker for giving, uh, Dr. Ganesh, for giving us a beautiful session, sir. And it's really uh, useful. I think it will be very useful for uh, the students, as well as uh, our postgraduate uh, post students. And I thank, once again, I thank uh, Dr. Ganesh for accepting our invitation in spite of his busy, busy schedule. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you so much, sir. It was, uh, and I thank all the, for all the participants for the support and making this event a grand success. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So much. Ah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Um, just a kind reminder to all the participants, uh, the link for the feedback form has been posted in the chat box. Uh, please uh, use the link and give the feedback to us. Once the form is filled, the certificate for the webinar will be automatically generated. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, sir.